first scoop uh, we've done, as opposed to the slurp or the clip. Yeah, um, is there a particular type of sampling that um, is more challenging than the others to op operationally? Uh, good question. Um, yeah, they're all challenging in some aspects. Uh, it depends. It depends radically on um, the bathymetry and the conditions and how we're able to position the vehicle for the to get the sample. So that's probably more. Uh, more of a challenge, so what would be a, a really easy sample in one situation could be a very challenging sample in another situation. Mm. So maybe less the particular sampling method, but more just like the conditions of the water and terrain around it. Yeah, depending on how we can uh, position the ROV, whether it's flat or vertical, uh, what the currents are doing where Atlanta is, uh, if the ship is moving or not. Um, it's definitely more challenging when the when the ship is moving because you have the, uh, when Atlanta is moving, sorry, uh, because as Atlanta moves, it's, that makes the Hercules tether dynamic. So that affects uh, how we position the ROV and how much uh, thrust it takes to hold the ROV in that position. Currents obviously a yeah. big factor. Um, yeah, sometimes it can be super easy to take a sample on a you know hundred meter vertical cliff, and sometimes it can be not possible. Same with the flat. You know, it also depends uh, on um, the density and the um, and seabed. So, and some of the other ones we've done have been very challenging to uh, because there's so many animals around to get wow. the vehicle yeah. in without uh, collateral Bumping. damage. Yeah. So we're inches away from, you know, lots of centuries old coral. It's not very aware of what the ship is doing, what Atlanta is doing. Yeah. What the layback is um, on Atlanta versus Nautilus, so all those things we uh, have to be aware of when we decide whether we're going to attempt a sample or not. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of some of the things we're constantly uh, keeping track of up here anyways, so we don't have to, you know, stop and evaluate all that. We can, we should know right away whether we're in a position to attempt to sample or not. Uh, some of the other challenges are with those uh, particular jaws we have on there. They are uh, specialized jaws for uh, sampling coral. Mm -hmm. They're also very large, so they tend, the way the manipulator works, it they tend to go wide open, which is well over 300 millimeters or a foot, 330 millimeters or so. And if we're trying to get into a tight place, we have to uh, kind of hold the jaws closed the whole time. Wow. So we can be in a tight place where one little move with your finger and the jaws will go from, you know, 25 centimeters to, or 25 millimeters to 330 millimeters all of a sudden. And that can be catastrophic if you're in the middle of a you know, coral or something like that. So. Oh. Well, thanks for sharing. I know, like, on the screen, we just see this beautiful video. Um, so it's always interesting for the viewers to know, like, everything going on behind just to make that happen. So. And, um, Jaina, do you have a moment for a question? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so on the ship to shores, um, and for our audience, that's basically when we um, call into classrooms from aboard um, the Nautilus to share what we're doing. Um, we had a class earlier asking about uh, careers and interns, Sorry, internships. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. And um, they're asking how they can kind of prepare for those kind of internships while in high school. And um, Jake was able to share kind of his um, advice as an ROV intern. And Catalina was able to share some things that could help you if you wanted to become a mapping intern. But unfortunately, um, we only have three audio <laughs> plugs there. So we can't have too many um, people in the studio at a time. And um, they're curious to know like what um, would you want, what what is some advice you could give to a high schooler if they wanted to become um, a video engineering intern or work in fields adjacent to that? Um, yeah, advice to a high schooler. Well, um, I have a degree in filmmaking and environmental studies. Um, and I've always kind of, I've always had a love for nature and film and wanted to combine the two. Um, and I think especially when you're trying to pursue an art degree, it can be um, very hard to stay motivated um, and think that you can make it in a field like that. Um, but for me, it was just surrounding myself with people who believed in me as well as, um, you know, networking as much as I can. Um, Networking is really like the biggest thing that I could have done. Um, and yeah, just really staying motivated. Um, when I got this internship, they really stressed that it's like 1% skill and 99% people skills, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, having people skills is really, really important. Um, and I think just being willing to learn and being willing um, to admit you don't know things. That's something that I struggled with at first is, yeah, admitting that I don't know things, but that's okay. And you can learn from it. Oh, so much wisdom to share. Yeah. <laughs> Did you um, take like photography or learn about the equipment while you're in high school in any way? Or is that something you were able to pick up pretty quickly once you started at university? Um, yeah, in high school, I was self-taught a lot, a lot of YouTube, you know, looking up YouTube videos, just watching a lot of that. Um, and then I interned with a photographer in high school, and that's kind of where I really fell in love with the camera. Um, but it's also a very hard field to get started in. I mean, camera equipment is so expensive, and you always have to be upgrading it. And um, it can be a very priv privileged thing. Um, and then even, like, going into college and now it's um, being out of college it's still a very privileged thing and something you have to have a lot of money for um, and that's where networking really comes in handy because I have so many friends who I can just lean on and be like hey can I borrow this can I borrow this and use them for knowledge um, so yeah I uh, started taking a lot more classes in college and thankfully I was just so lucky that my um, college neighbor and my now best friend her aunt worked at a production company um, where I was going to school and so yeah networking like I said and a little bit of luck got me that job and kind of put me on the trajectory where I am today and then yeah I got this internship because one of my friends was doing it before and they're like you should apply and so I applied <laughs> and I got it too. So that's, that's cool. awesome yeah and can you share a little bit more about uh, what you're doing I, I did try my best to share <laughs> what you're doing with like sync audio I believe and editing photos for us um, but are there other aspects that you would say are really important components of this um, role that you're playing in this um, internship uh yeah something that it's very engineer heavy and that's something I didn't realize at first um, you know understanding what all the wires do what all the signals do um, learned how to make an ethernet cable <laughs> oh. and like pulling apart a cable and putting all the wires back together. Oh, my wow. first try took me like an hour and I was ready to cry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of like that engineering side that I hadn't had experience in before and like fiber cables and yeah, just knowing what all the cables do and how all those signals work and it's a lot of troubleshooting. Um, but when I'm sitting in this seat, yeah, I'm controlling the iris, like making, I can make it brighter, can make it darker, 
um, zooming in, keeping things in focus. Um, and yeah, just making sure everything is being recorded correctly, everything is being streamed correctly, controlling all the cameras on the ship. Um, but yeah, it's also very engineer heavy, which I think is very oh. cool. It's something I haven't had experience in, so I'm learning a lot. Wow, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, when they say video engineering, it's really like the engineering component in there. So that's so cool. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. I'm sure I just saw some viewers pop in from Guam. So maybe on the night of those might have been the students that we were talking to there um, about those internships. So uh, that's pretty awesome. And did you want to share a little bit about your films that you've been working on when you're not um, on the Nautilus as well? Um, if you're not too busy and yeah, no, not if they're busy. not too personal. Or <laughs> yeah. Um, I, when I'm not on the Nautilus, I work full time at a production company. We do a lot of corporate work. Um, you know, that type of stuff pays the bills. And then on the side, you can do all your fun projects. So um, have a couple personal projects that I'm working on um, with friends that I'm so lucky to have that help me out. Um, working on one right now about like being Hawaiian and my indigenous culture and moving away from home and feeling that disconnect. Um, also working on a couple documentaries, other indigenous documentaries, which I'm uh -huh. so grateful to be a part of. Um, and, and yeah, just a couple of short narrative pieces on the side with a couple of friends. Um, yeah, working in the film is really fun because when you're all not just doing, you know, kind of the more boring work that pays the bills, everybody on the side is just doing stuff for fun and all working together. Very cool. And um, very important to, like, share those diverse perspectives and your voice. Um, so thank you so much for, you know, sharing with us in this way and also through um, that very artistic medium. I'm, like, definitely curious. I want to see <laughs> your films later if, if that's something you're willing to share. Yeah, thanks so much. I think that film can be, like, one of the most powerful tools for change and advocacy, you know? Um, can help us see things that we can't see in our backyards, like the ocean floor. So <laughs> yeah. I think film is a very important tool. Uh, can I jump in with a little bit of uh, echinoderma, the background yes. story, because we were talking yes, about course. it. Yeah. So I wanted to check something, uh, whether the current phylogeny and the taxonomy match and how where it stands. So for the phylum echinodermata, we have three subphylums, uh, the asterozoa, the echinozoa, and the crinozoa. So the crinozoas have the class crinoidea, the crinoids. Now, within the Asterozoa, we have two classes, the sea stars and the Ophuroid. So, Asteroidea and the uh, Ophuroidea. And then, within the subphylum Echinozoa, we have the Echinoideas, which are the sea urchins, and the uh, sea cucumbers, the Holothuroidea. So, if you look at the evolutionary history, the crinoids are the basal Echinoderms to the rest of them. And Within the rest, the sea stars and the ophuroids are closely related to each other. The uh, sea urchins and the sea cucumbers are related to each other. So, Very cool. when we see a brucentrin, that is a sea star, which looks like a crinoid, which is actually evolutionary quite far away from right. it. And then we have the ophuroids, which have a similar... Wow, thanks for looking that up. Yeah, I, it's just that it's been a while, so I wanted to make sure that uh, what the current phylogeny right. is, because they keep changing. So yeah, from yeah. what I can find right now, it still holds same. And right. And like crinoids, I've heard, are like really ancient. Very ancient, We can yeah. find crinoid um, Fossil fossils. Data, yeah. So I guess that would make sense that they are what you said, the basal group, meaning yes. like kind of the bottom. If you imagine like a branching tree, they're kind of that bottom node, right, that everything yeah. else diversified yeah. from. So when, exactly, so when we say basal, that means uh, evolutionarily they are an older group of organisms than the others, and the, the others evolved after them. 
So, yes. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, crinoids are very old. We have lots of crinoid fossils and they're very frequently used in dating phylogenies for invertebrates and for echinoderms and a lot of things. Yeah, and when we say crinoid fossils, we're usually talking about their stalks, right? Um, yeah. yeah, the stalks like, uh, yeah, the, fe the feathery part also, the skeleton, the, they have imprints of crinoids also. Oh, okay, so the... rock surfaces. Yeah. The feather, the feathery part makes the imprint, but then the stalk, it makes like almost segments, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, the sea cucumbers and the urchins are related to each other. Sea cucumbers and? And the urchins. Yes, are more closely related to each other. That's interesting because their forms so are so is, different. Yeah. So you, we have the sea stars of the Ophiura sister mm -hmm. to one another. This group is sister to the sea urchins and the sea cucumbers. Mm -hmm. This bigger group is then sister to the crinoids. And here we have the echinoderms. Oh. Yeah, I would have guessed, if I had it like guessed out of the blue, I would have guessed like um, urchins and sea stars because they both have that like radial symmetry yeah. kind of. Um, I guess, right? yeah. Yeah, pentamers. whereas sea symmetry. cucumbers are more like bilaterally symmetrical. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. They have the pentamers symmetry actually inside. Yeah, we they have radial symmetry it, inside. inside. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. The, the delicious it, sides of them <laughs> inside, and they're, they're both, of delicious. course, edible, so that's, there's that. Yeah. I think that was the, the <laughs> component of the Phi Phyla soup, was sea cucumber. Sea cucumber? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have four now. Yeah. Right, the uh, arthropods, cnidarians, mollusks, would be clams or something, and uh, sea cucumber. Yeah. You need to tell me what the fifth one was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested now. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, of these, other than arthropods, obviously shrimps and crabs. I'm not a great fan of crabs, but shrimps. I've had a lot and uh, some mollusks, but not the other five. Hmm. Yeah, and how did how did you eat sea cucumber when it was prepared? What's your favorite way to eat, Hans? Well, I'm not fond of sea cucumber, so I don't have a favorite way. Oh, but okay. I've had it in soup. Oh. How do they okay. taste sea cucumbers? Very mild. It's cool. gelatinous. <laughs> oh, gelatinous. <laughs> I have no idea. I've never tried. A lot of people like sea urchin is what I've heard. Um, really? The uni. Yeah. Oh. Like uni is good. Yeah. Very rich. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> so are sea urchins um, scavengers or are they also deposit feeders? Deposit. They're also deposit feeders. They can be predatory as well. They can be predatory oh, okay. as well. I think uh, in shallow water, they can often be pretty herbivorous too, like eating a lot of algae and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I've sea seen urchins are quite predatory. Yeah, I've seen some uh, on previous you know, dives and other expeditions, some kelp um, fall into the seafloor oh with wow. urchins feeding on that. Yeah. Wow. They all like piled on top yeah. to eat it. Yeah. And That's some cool. of the deep sea urchins have these beautiful poisonous sacs also. Well. Beautiful what? Poisonous sacks at the end oh, of the world. Wow. And they look so beautiful that you wouldn't think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of things that look beautiful are actually displaying like those the colors. Or, yeah. It's the same with the frogs, right? The more colorful, the yeah. more poisonous. <laughs> Sorry if I could. Um, everybody kept talking about how good I'm doing, but Jaina is doing an awesome job as an intern as well. It's a native Hawaiian and, an, and a seat right here, and it's, it has to <laughs> do a lot of stuff, you know, talk, look at the coolers and everything, so give her her, give her her flowers too. Aww. Yeah, you're she's so sweet, Jake. You do you. great, Jaina. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mia. Yeah, if Ed's listening, she's way better on the Zoom focus than Ed is. <laughs> Yeah, you make you make Dan look good with your zooms. You, do. you don't get enough shout outs. She's also constantly, constantly on the iris, I can see when she's adjusting yeah. over here. I know, I think I might get like arthritis after this in my wrists. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I could not do the ROV controls, it's arthritis. I know my neck just hurts staring up at all these screens. But thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah give credit where credit's mm -hmm. due. Yeah, it's just a, such a cool internship opportunity for me and Jake because they really just put you in the driver's seat and they tell you to go. And so <laughs> I feel like a lot of internships aren't like that, you know? It's awesome. 
Yeah, and what do you think you'll be doing next after the internship? If you have any ideas that you're uh, willing to share. What I'm next? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I didn't know boat life was really an option, but I'm really loving it. And I think before this, I was really kind of stuck in the corporate world and I want to get back to like my oh. environmental roots. So yeah. if I can do that more, that would be great. I didn't know how much I missed it until I got here. Mm. That's so nice. It sounds like the internship has been like not only skill building, but also just generally like a little like direction finding and are there yeah, any other absolutely. like major take and, and it also you said you you could see yourself being on um, vessels for like longer periods of time like large vessels like these as well so yeah, any other major takeaways from the internship um i think just from nautilus and oet in general like the way they operate um yeah is very leading and a lot of other people should be doing things the same way you know and it's just so diverse and it feels like such a safe space and um the way that nautilus not only includes indigenous voices but lets indigenous voices lead um that's very rare and i think that a lot more people should be following their lead so yeah yeah thank you so much for sharing that I know um, Malia, who's on a different watch, um, she said um, the way that Nautilus or Ocean Exploration Trust um, approached um, working in Papahanaumo, Kuakea, Marine National Monument, they, they really reached out to the community like really early before you know, making any um, specific actions. They like wanted to get that feedback, feedback and input um, early on. And they, um, Malia also suggested a kind of document called my um let me look that up again um but it was like serving as um like a template for how we can engage um sure. in indigenous uh, communities in management Yeah, I was reading over that document. Uh, is that the one that we have a copy of in the, the lounge? Yeah. Um, um, very beautiful and impressive and well thought out and definitely should be followed as you know, an yeah. example for sure. And I just wanted to look it up so I didn't um, say the wrong thing, but um, it is called My Kapo Mai, I believe, and the subtitle under oh, that is... Oh, we can't turn left a bit. A Native Hawaiian Guidance Document for the Management of Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument. So, again, if anyone is interested in learning more about um, how we ensure that Indigenous voices and values are upheld whenever um, we have these large protected areas that are also managed with um, fed the federal government, um, we can look to this uh, document for kind of like a... Uh, case study for how Papa Anamo Kuakea has been doing it. Is there anything you wanted to add, Jaina? As well, I hope I didn't cut you off. It's a little hard to hear with the fans going on. Oh, no, no, you didn't cut me off. Um, yeah, I think it's just really powerful to be the younger generation and be a part of something like this. It feels really good and um, makes me want to make more of a difference, you know, and knowing that we can be those leaders. It's a great feeling. Nice. Yeah, and I've, uh, I'm not a native Hawaiian, but um, I have been working with OET for a couple of years and have really seen the growth um, in that relationship and partnership that they're building. Um, and I think that's great that they're willing to have the tougher conversations and um, really exalt those conversations and put them at the forefront of what we're doing here. And I think that's really important to never stop adjusting and listening and yeah, adjusting our, our operations to, to align with those um, cultural beliefs. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And yeah, yeah, it's I really cool that you've been able to see that whole process because you've been with OET for a while. Yeah, just to jump in in between yeah. this very yeah, interesting yeah. conversation that has been going on. So uh, I think we have started, we have started seeing a few of the Coralid 
Uh, corals, probably hemichorallium, but they're, we are quite far away to actually ID them, uh, but definitely in the family Coralliidae. Uh, there was a cyanelectric sea cucumber, a pink colored uh, sea cucumber, and uh, we saw a batipathies. A while ago, there was a paranthipathies, uh, and there was right now a sea star, definitely a goniasterid, that was plopped up on the rock. I saw the sea star. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> And uh, just a quick, out, quick shout out um, in the comments. I see, I'm seeing this message saying, so proud of you, Jaina, love, dad. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, dad. <laughs> <laughs> and another commenter at, um, asking that you see a masseuse after your watch so you do not get arthritis or <laughs> what was the word, carpal tunnel, yeah. <laughs> How do you think we're doing waypoint-wise, Mia? Yeah, she was asking, so am I loud? <laughs> oh, yeah. I care, uh, she couldn't hear your question. Oh, yes. Sorry. The fans and then yeah. the different channels. Um, I was just asking how the terrain is looking as we approach the waypoint. How are we looking? Any thoughts? Yeah, we can. Are you on SPL? I don't no. Know. Yeah. Sorry. Um, flicking all the buttons. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we were going up and then we went down to what, what's called like a saddle. If you look at it, it looks like a saddle in the contour lines. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to be heading back up. So we are just kind of skirting next to waypoint seven and then going due north because waypoint eight's there. And now we're heading back and the nudging back towards waypoint seven. Um, but we're almost uh, parallel to that. So um, it's just going to be uphill, I think, from here. Uphill, you said? I think so, yeah. Okay. Wow. But, you know, it can be contours of lies. Yeah, but thank you so much for the update. And I think we have a, a little over 10 minutes left in our watch. Yeah, I mean, we've done great in our watch in terms of waypoints. So we're, we're right <laughs> next to waypoint seven, so we're pa like passing it. Um, and then waypoint eight, which is, I believe, the last one. The last one, Is yeah. only oh, wow. 290 meters away. Wow, we've gotten so much better. <laughs> There's another sea star, the Goni Asteroid. I see it. So cute. I don't know if folks who are watching and listening are able to hear that, but the temperature control in the van is very important, not for our comfort, but for the operation of the computers and electronics. And so now and then there needs to be adjustments made, and there are fans that are on that are quite loud right now. Um, but I hope that doesn't come through on your end. Yeah. Another sea urchin. Uh, probably the cyanoroid it's there the, the pencil urchin. And thank you to all our viewers from the US, Canada, Australia, Puerto Rico, Philippines, New Zealand, Japan, Guam, the UK. Russia, Norway, Korea, Spain, China, and Belize. Um, we're really uh, glad to be able to explore with you. Um, feel free to continue inputting your um, questions into the chat box as we finish up our watch and transition to the next watch. There may be a pause, but we'll get to them when we can. Why do I smell cookies? 
I think the fan is um, <laughs> so Elsa brought some cookies earlier and they're actually um, next to me hidden um, but I think the fan is really powerful so it's been wafting that cookie <laughs> smell around <laughs> It there's a, there's yeah. a Dan tax in here. Yeah, <laughs> there's another one of those three money with pom pom sponges. The Dan tax is three for one. Limo Nima, li Lipo Nima. So there's a fish which is called Limo Nima, and there's a an enemy which is called Lipo Nima or huh? Lipo Nima. So I always mispronounce those. <laughs> Video swap. Roger. Thank you, Jaina. Thank you, Jaina. Yeah, thanks, Jaina. You do an amazing job. So we are starting our watch uh, change. Harmatiad, fly trap in enemy, bamboo coral whips, there's some chrysogorgian, there's something in the front, probably uh, a small bamboo fan. This is the end of the afternoon watch the next watch coming in is the start of the dog watch <laughs> the dog watch <laughs> yes the what watch the dog watch the Do dog watch dog you might have been yes. doing a shift ashore when we explained that <laughs> um, but hans can explain it again briefly but if you traditionally want to. on board ships there would be two dog watches of two hours each okay shorter smaller oh. like a dog <laughs> That's know. because that's when the sailors ate. They wanted to sh have a two-hour, two-hour split ah, shift. Okay. And then back to the regular four-hour watches. Ah, okay. So I guess what we do instead is we change the watch, but we will come in for about half an hour during dinner time for... Um, this watch to eat. Yeah, I think the right. Nautilus does it a little different. From That's how we handle the dog watch. It's not a split watch. Yeah. Following that, at 8 p.m., it's the first watch. At midnight, it's the middle watch after the first watch. Mm. And then, and then 4, 4 a.m., the, the morning watch. And then the forenoon watch, 8 to 12. <laughs> and then the afternoon watch. <laughs> and then the dog watch. Mm, interesting. Another coralliard under that ledge like structure. Look at that ropey structure of the yeah. lava there. Yeah, that's cool. And there's a percentage crinoid and probably a sea star ducked in and some cup corals underneath. That's a, that's a very intriguing structure. There's a metallogorgia, a small metallogorgia. I thought that, that was like a petrified tree for a second. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. All right, there are more of the Dog Watch members showing up, so we will sign off. Thank you, Afternoon Watch. Thank you, Front Row, for an excellent job and excellent sampling today. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You much. Much appreciated. It has been a fun watch, as Front usual. Row. And time for a watch change. Thank and you, hand over thank to you Hannah. Everyone. Cookies, thank let's go. <laughs> thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you for our viewers as well. Looking forward to continuing to explore with you next time.
Check one, check one. Set one, two, three. Recorder one, two, three, four. Check, check. Good, air temp hot, one hour timer. Hello, hello. Hey. Hi, everyone. How oh, are we? something super hissy. Where is that nine SCF? Huh, seems better now. That's better. Did you say it was my mic, Ed? Yeah, it was. I think maybe you just had air blowing right into it. Oh, now it's back. It's back? Okay. Uh, hold on, it might be something else. All right, uh, I'll figure it out here in a sec. Okay. Do, do, do. do you want me to uh, mute in the meantime? No, nah, you're good. Okay. I got it. Appreciate it. Yeah. And then, uh, da, 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 da. let's change this, edit, set up page. Once everyone's on comms, I'll give you a little update here. Huh. Um, putting you in auto iris when I work on something. Me? What? You can hear me? Yeah. Yep. That was really weird. Okay, All right. Pulling me around. Yep. I got it now. Going back. Everybody on comms in here? I think so. Check on comms. All right. So quick update for you guys. We had a uh, short outage of the chilled water to the vans. Ah. That's why it's warm in here, and it's why we have our uh, air handlers running at full blast. So. Oh. Sorry about the noise. Uh, it's been resolved. Temp's coming down. Roger that. Uh, we'll be able to crank those down. Unfortunately, it's also a hot part of the day. Yeah, it's also pretty warm outside. Yeah, so it uh, should resolve here in a bit. But till then, it's going to sound like we're on a B-17. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Roger or that. B-29. So we are taking over for the 12-4 to watch. We're just passing waypoint 7 probably not going directly to waypoint seven and we're making our way to the final waypoint which is waypoint eight um, and we're on sort of the summit of this uh, rise or one of the summits seeing fairly smooth what are these pillow low low bait flows um, low bait flows there we go there's one one little coral uh, and we're just going to be exploring the summit here uh, this watch we'll probably um, start to our ascent to the surface around 6.30 local time. All right, 6.30. So it's in two and a half hours for people not on the vessel. What was it? I just went to look at our depth. I didn't even look at it. 1,500-ish. 1,555. I 
I asked Malia before we got up here about where she thought we were going to be um, with the waypoints, and she was spot on. Mm -hmm. Oh. That was a lucky guess. Yes, I wasn't watching any of yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Now that we've got everyone, I think we can do a round of introductions, um, our usual, just kind of name, role, um, where you're from, and then let's do an easy one. Just favorite creature in the whole ocean, anything. In okay. the whole ocean. Whole All ocean. Right. Okay, so I'll go first. Uh, my name is Tori Hunt. I'm a science communicator, um, and I'm a high school teacher uh, in, from North Carolina when I'm not sailing. Um, I've always loved sharks, and my favorite shark is a bull shark. We saw some sharks today, which was very exciting. We did. Yes. And you have shark earrings. I do. I took them off. I think I have on lobster earrings now. Yeah. Or hopefully maybe some spot lobsters you may see. I don't know. But yeah, I love sharks. All right. Malia, what about you? Yeah, we were so lucky to see three mm -hmm. sharks off our, uh, what is that, port side. Mm -hmm. um, early this, not early this morning, but during the later part of this morning. So that was pretty cool. Like, yeah, right after, like right tip. from lunch. Yeah. yeah. I woke up, came outside, and everyone was like, there are sharks. So cool. So uh, my name is Malia Evans. I am on board. I work as a resource monitor and an educator. Um, my real job is with Kokohanaumokokia Marine National Monument as an outreach and education coordinator. And I'm originally from Hilo, Hawaii. Um, what was the question? Favorite creature in the whole. Favorite hole. creature. I gotta say, my favorite creature are hey. So, um, octopus. Mm. Like, I just love octopus. Not only to eat, but to just visually see how beautiful no. and intelligent oh, these animals are. Yes. And what was the word? Hey. 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 Can you spell that? H-E. Okay. Okina E. Hey. I heard H-E. Okina is a backward, um, like, like a backward, it's like a double stop. Mm -hmm. And then it For octopus. Nice. New word for the watch. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Mike? All right, uh, Mike Brennan. I'm the uh, watch lead. I'm a maritime archaeologist for Search Inc. and uh, one of the co-lead scientists for this expedition. Uh, my favorite creature in the ocean would be a manta ray, uh, closely followed by a tiger shark. Hi, I'm Hannah Parody. I am part of the science team as a geologist. I'm at grad school at CSULB, which is California State University, Long Beach. And my favorite sea creature, I don't know if this counts, but um, is it, can I say penguin? No. <laughs> I mean... They're adjacent to the sea. Well, and okay, okay, sea lions. Sea. I sea love lines. sea lions. Okay. Because they, I love going and they always put on a show. <laughs> and so I think they're so cute. Sebastian, so um, what do you say about the penguins? I think penguins um, can count, I guess. I think penguins count because the sea lions can be on land and swim in the water, penguins yeah. can too. That's true. Okay. Mike, I have a question. Also, Does I the also... manta ray have to be closely followed by the tiger shark? Or do you like them both individually? Uh, no, no. Manta ray first, closely followed. As stated. <laughs> but I guess another one of my favorites are hippos. Hippos. I love hippos. They hippos are, are definitely not marine not animals. Marine animals. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, but still. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised your favorite isn't the rockfish. I didn't even know that existed, but it could be a favorite now. <laughs> it's it, literally called the rockfish. Rockfish. I'll have to look it up. I'll have it's to look that. it up. Oh, she doesn't have an image. It's oh, she's looking it up right that. now. Oh, I we don't saw like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that one. I believe its genus is Sebastus. Oh, that should be yours then. <laughs> that should be yours. <laughs> we saw them all over the shipwrecks in, uh, like, the, the Greek and Roman wrecks in the Mediterranean. They're all oh. over it. They're massive. Uh, they live upwards of oh, 100 yeah, years. Oh, oh, my geez. gosh. Oh, and shout out to my <laughs> sister. She's watching, Mackenzie. Um, yeah, thanks, Mackenzie. Love you. <laughs> All right, Sebastian, I think it's your turn. <laughs> All right. My name is Sebastian Martinez. I'm a data logger here on Nautilus. Um, I'm also an undergraduate researcher at University of Hawaii, Manoa. 
Um, my favorite animal is the scaly foot snail. Oh, I remember that one. Scaly is that the one that has snail? the like manganese on it? Well, it has iron, iron? growing on its yeah. mantle. So it kind of gives it almost like a little bit of like a dragon looking snail. Scale? Yeah. Wait, what was it called again? It's this, my. Oh. I don't know. The how scaly foot snail. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is cool. It looks like a, like a, yeah, like a lava. It looks like a pahoy hoy. Yeah. A pahoy hoy snail. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I that think is I remember cool. you showing me a picture of it. Nice. It's like, it looks like it crawled out of a volcano. Yeah. You see, that they should be called a, something with rock. They live like in hydrothermal vents. Sense. So they, oh. they do have a lot of heat resistance. I love. Nice. Okay. Anyone on front row ready? Uh, sure. Yeah. This is Derek Sowers. Uh, I'm the navigator on this watch. I'm the, uh, the mapping manager for Ocean Exploration Trust. And uh, my favorite animal in the ocean is spinner dolphins. They're, they're so cool. Yeah, those are cool. We see them off the uh, off the coast of uh, Jacksonville often. Yeah, usually. It's like, what is that? Oh, it's a yeah. Yeah. Jumping in out of the water. Jake? My favorite animal is a beluga whale. Beluga whale. Animal. I have a I picture like with a beluga whale. <laughs> <laughs> I, met, I met one in SeaWorld when I was like seven. Go for oh, Zoom. So much fun. <laughs> and that was Jake Bunny, our Hercules pilot. Yes, that yes. was Jake Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot that part. That's okay. He said the most important thing for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> the rest we can fill in for you. Nice. All right, Tito, what about you? I think that this might be a Scalarectinian coral, maybe a dead one. Doesn't look too hot. Scalarectinian. That's a fun word. What's your favorite creature? <laughs> Tito, are you on SPL? Are you on SPL? Oh, hey. Uh, there you How's go. That? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. yep, we got you. Hi, Tito Colacious in the front row here uh, from Woods Hole Oceanographic. Uh, typically spend my time working with Jason, but I'm out here as a first time pilot. My favorite animal in the ocean is the swordfish. All right. Ooh. Swordfish. Good one. Nice. Good choice. Ready when you are. Oh. Ready. Is it Tina Gone. for an hour? Yep. I'm going to yep, leave it wide so you can yep. yeah. fly with it. I'm always amazed by them. Always. Wait, what is it? Pukai Anaha. Pukai Anaha. Yeah. Did I spell Tina for right? Uh, yeah. uh, close enough. Is it C C C T E N A or O? C S A. A. Tina for. Is that the mouth that, or stomach or something that we Wait. talked about on the last one? Is this a predatory <laughs> tinafore? Um, I'm not sure on this one. I, this one might be a tinafore, but it's kind of small. And the, the shape isn't fully the same as a predatory one. I have another really bad joke. Okay. So there was a family. Um, Who said okay? <laughs> Anna did. <laughs> <laughs> it's her fault now. <laughs> so. This one's on you. Yeah, there, there was a family, a mom and dad had four daughters. And they named them all Christina, and it was Tina Four. <laughs> wow, that was quick. That one was not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Too much setup for me. <laughs> Too much setup, oh. Oh, man. Next time, don't even ask permission, I guess. Tough crowd, guess. yeah. Go for it. That's like, uh, my son comes up with those jokes, so. <laughs> I'll call that a son joke instead of a dad joke. Yeah, yeah, that works. 
<laughs> oh yeah, we didn't get to Ed yet. Oh yeah. Uh, this is Ed yet over at video. Uh, I think I'm probably torn between the giant Pacific octopus and that flamboyant squid worm that we saw in the Galapagos. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> I'm actually really surprised that the summit here doesn't have more growing on it. Seems like the biology has been pretty homogenous this entire dive. Still very Go grateful and excited for our zooming in. And ET sponge sighting oh, earlier. I'll come back out in just a second. There Ooh. we go. Just hanging out. Some pink hanging spot the lobsters. Look at that whole thing, but man, it's tall. There we go. Then come in and see if I can get. Is that a them. black coral? Um, I'm pretty sure it's a black coral. Yes. <laughs> it has a kind of like symmetry to the tentacles, has a black skeleton. What is, is the bottom clue. part of? The dead coral, is that the same coral? Like, is that also a black coral that's dead on, attached to it? Um, I don't okay. quite know. Okay. Um, it looked like a dead crinoid to me. Okay. Bridge nav. Please do a ship move, zero five zero meters at bearing three two zero. I like how many ways in science there are to say that you don't know, and I'm going to start incorporating those into my daily life. So when my wife asked, why didn't I, hasn't the trash been emptied? I can say, you know, we've looked into that and it's poorly understood. There haven't been a lot of papers on that topic yet. You could also say, um, there's not enough information. I think you could say about it is conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not qualified to speak to that. <laughs> so earlier we saw that um, black coral. Mm -hmm. So the Hawaiian word for that is kula mana mana. But I was just looking at when they found one that was right outside of Papahanao Mokuakea that's been dated to 2,740 years old. Wow. And it's actually a portion of it is in the Bishop Museum. Wow. Where's that museum at? Um, in Honolulu. So it's like the Natural History Museum of Hawaii. I took a tour of their um, fish and invertebrate collections once. It's pretty extensive. They have a mega mouth shark just sitting in a box and I'm using it as a table. <laughs> what? <Jeez. laughs> just to be clear, that's not what we do with the samples we take. <laughs> I'm like, why don't you put it on display? You have one of the few mega mouth shark specimens in the US and they did not display it. I see. Is it in like ethanol or what? what? I think it's in formalin. Oh. Wait, what did you just say? Uh, it's a whole mega mouth shark. No, no. Did you say tourmaline? Formalin. Formalin. Oh, formalin. Shrimp. I was like, what is that? Not the semi-precious mineral. <laughs> Tourmaline. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, he's just like um, Han Solo, that shark. Yeah, yeah. I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, wait, this has got to be the coolest thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was That was trippy for a minute for me. Hey, do, yep, coming in. Hey, Dirk, if you want, you can roll that A-track to about the 12 o'clock position. I mean, I'm pretty so sure the... Uh, shrimp. Oh, wow. Purple. It has a purple. Say he has a big mouth at one point, so he is kind of a mega mouth. 
Who? Han Solo. Oh. I don't know. I haven't seen this color. Yeah. Me either. No. I feel like he has scary eyes too. They look like they're like glowing. I think they're reflecting our light back okay. at us. I, I got like, more zoom, but I don't scary. know if you need to see the surroundings. We're pretty high up. You're telling me. <laughs> you feeling any current, Jake? Yeah, a little bit. I think the shrimp is. So. Which direction? Um, right to left. Right to left, yeah. Okay. All right, coming out. Look how far away this thing is. <laughs> Uh, is this still low bait flow? Um, right now it looks like just destroyed sheet flow. But maybe now that I'm look now that we turned and I'm looking over here, maybe that was some low bait flow. What, what were you talking about earlier in our? previous watch, like the great looking patrioidal, patrioidal. <laughs> Earlier today, me and Kakui were trying to say it as fast as we could, <laughs> just because it was, it was so fun. And actually we did pretty well. Patrioidal? So, yeah, just like repeating. <laughs> yeah, actually this looks like low bait flow. Good job, Tori. Thanks. Awesome. Up here. Oh. Tori was actually, she came and saw us do petrological descriptions on our rocks mm -hmm. yesterday. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday. Yes, yeah, so it yeah. doesn't feel like yesterday. But it it doesn't feel like it, yeah. Yeah, I got to see the rock cutting. I came back later, saw the descriptions. We still Good want time. you to cut a rock because we, we have the rock for you. I still want to cut a rock. <laughs> okay, well, it, it, we have it. I, I see it every, every time I walk in there, like, that's Tori's. <laughs> really? Yeah. In my mind, okay. I'm yeah. gonna come visit it. When? Well, I don't know when we're cutting again. Maybe okay. tomorrow if we're doing transit. Probably, maybe that. Oh, thorium. My guess is we're gonna transit overnight and probably dive sometime in the morning. It's my guess, but who knows? Oh. Who knows? Okay. There's no, there's been no indication of that, but that's oh. typically how it would go. All that matters. We'll find out tonight. Is that I'm gonna find you, Tori, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will grab you and we will. I'll take you away and we'll go do it. You know, I'm always down. And there's a whole 16 hours that she knows you're not on watch. Yeah, I know your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Except for when you have shit to shores. All oh, I have yeah. to do is look at the board, though. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Oh, also I have to shout out because another. So my sister and her, my one of my friends too, Isabel. They're both watching. So shout out to them. I love them and they support me on everything and they're also Swifties like me and <laughs> <laughs> and I love them for that. <laughs> Your sister put in the chat, she said she loves you too. She loves, aww. Is this I friend Bella that we were helping with? Can no, this is, a, this is Isabel. This is so Isabel. Bella is, she's also a Swiftie <laughs> too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sensing a trend. a trend. Yeah, yeah. So, well, the thing is, like, a few, like, my friend Bella, I, like, forced her to listen to Taylor Swift so much that she loved it. <laughs> That's typically not my reaction if someone makes me listen to something a lot. Yeah, but they come and visit me in L.A. all the time, which is, like, really nice. I take them to all the ice cream shops. That's the main thing that I go for. That's what I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, I think I was having a conversation with Miss Amber about um, all the ice cream oh, shops yeah. in LA, just because there there's so many of them and they're so good. Like salt and straw, <laughs> so good, <laughs> so good. This is definitely the not low blood sugar Hannah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is Hannah after visiting two or three ice cream shops. Yeah. Like yesterday, the ice cream just, it hit so, it hit so good. The cookies and cream was just like perfect. Oh it zoom? really was good. Going in. Going all the way. Be a little bouncy, but. Yeah, that's right. Get some hocus focus. Hocus focus. Come on there. <laughs> <laughs> See those little strands running off to the left? Oh, yeah. Oh, those are Tina Force. Actually, I'm genuinely serious. Wait, what? Uh, those are benthic 
Terry Forrest. Really? Yep. Wow, look at those things. Oh my god. I never would have seen those. It's like blue Hold on, whiskers. I can I can bring them out a little bit better. Stand by. There you go. Wow. I'm gonna follow them, see how That's far they go. Really oh. cool. So it's Tina is growing on the coral or yep. the sponge? Yeah, you can see them when we go back. And then they'll oh. retract these, right? Mm-hmm. And pull the uh whoop. Wow. No bright. Bring my black levels back up. There we go. Oh yeah. Wow. Lots and lots of them. That's amazing. Yeah. Sorry, is this a coral or is this a sponge? This is a sponge. Okay. Is it a glass sponge? Yep, it's a Walteria glass sponge. And so are oh, the tina left. Left. Huh? left. Are the white yeah. sticks here the sponge? That's cool. How they're kind of connected. Yeah, the white there. sticks are sponge. Okay. That one's retracting in, see it? The flesh oh, yeah, colored yeah, ones yeah, are the yeah. tina fours. Mm, yes. On the ends. Wow. Okay. Yes. You see one oh, pulling coming out. Off. We're I sliding. Just had a toe on there. Oof, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That was cool. You know, something you can't even see if you're this. Yeah, you, have, you can't see it at all at this yeah. at this uh, level. That's awesome. Seeing all the team of forest species. You can kind of see it there, the yeah. amalgamation of them. Oh yeah, now you can kind of just make it out. Yep. You can see the lasers. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Take eDNAs. Like, are they all done? Just curious. Or any? <laughs> uh, let me see. Actually. Oh, we did one, right? Yeah, we, we, did, we did one. one. Yeah, yeah, we, we did, did one. one. Then they took another one. Let me see what they took it up though. Is that a crinoid or a brisingid? That is a brisingid. Okay. So. Yes, they took a background one, so we're good. Okay, cool. Do you, yeah, I don't know if there's much reason to do one like here, because there's like almost nothing here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. Maybe we're going to find a big coral forest at Waypoint 8. Maybe. <laughs> and now. The chances are never zero. That's right. What is everyone's favorite thing from this dive? It doesn't have to be from our watch. Uh, I know what mine is. Well, my favorite thing is the is the acorn worm, but I didn't see it. The but, egg? Yeah, they found it on the, at the beginning of our the beginning of the dive apparently. Oh wait, before I we came on watch. Up. Yeah. Um, I just remember them from dives off California. They're really both bizarre and really cool. I'm excited to see that highlight. Hannah, what were you about to say? I said I know what your favorite part was. What was it? The Tina Corp. No, it's the, the Tina Corp. Corp. Trinacorp. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I think every time I hear that, I'm like Triceratops. And then <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I was downstairs. When y'all saw the third one, I was downstairs, so I turned around and saw it like briefly swimming. Uh, mm -hmm. How was that one? That one was cutie. Oh, I really? thought he was going to come up and kiss the camera on Hercules. <laughs> I was like, too bad Tori's not here. I still got to see it a little bit. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing that I've seen on this one um, has to be the rock that I picked out first this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but creature-wise, I would have to say the Triceratops. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, say it again. Say Chonicops. 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 I'm going to write it down. Chonicops. <laughs> Or as you like to call it, Tina Cops. Tina, Tina Cops. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
My favorite was definitely the pycnogoted sea spider we saw. Oh yeah, that was cool. That was so creepy. Yeah. Oh. That one was special. Malia, what was yours? I think mine was, um, I love the okay. cherry blossom like coral. Is that the metal uh, gorgia? The me metallogorgia. Metallogorgia. I just love like the laciness of it. It's just so beautiful. Nice. Derek, what was yours? I'm sorry, what was the question? Favorite thing that you've seen on this watch? Kind of like the T four actually. Yeah. The the one in the water column. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Go for zoom. Done it. Cup coral and a sponge. Yep. Oh, is that an ET sponge? Um, oh, I forgot about the ET sponge. I think it's too small to oh. tell. Oh, I can see the two dots. I think it is. Is it? Yeah. Because in the still camera, I can see the two dots. Oh. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Sebastian's not going to give it up easy. Yeah, I need to get sight myself in order to. I'll, I'll humor you. I'll put in the parentheses, maybe an ET sponge. Sorry. Look up at it. Yep. Jake's on the hunt now, now too. Now go for zoom. Yeah. Looks ET to me. Mm. Oh, wait, what? Not sold. <laughs> Let me just look at his camera. It's C.H. Oh. Chama Cops. <laughs> no. Huh? It's right there. There and there. <laughs> nice. Coming out. What I can neither confirm nor deny that is the ET the sponge. Cops. C O P S. Yes. C H A U. No, stop. Delete all that. <laughs> Any problem saying spelling Chana Cops? <laughs> N-O-C-O-P-S. No. Oh my god. That was so off of what I had. Chanoka, okay, yeah. There you go. Chana, you, like Fauna Cops. Now you can write it down. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a biologist. <laughs> Thank y'all for the zoom on that sponge. Those are my favorite sponges. Anemone. 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 <laughs> it's an enemy anemone. It looks particularly uh, round. Koosh ball. Yeah. Go for zoom. Go on in. Go or in as um, put it into geology words, it's batrioidal. It doesn't look oh, batrioidal. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's like the most round anemone I've ever we seen. We saw one of these the other day. I recognize the little uh, kind of frosted white tips on it. Looks like one of those. Let's see if I can get the lasers in the shot. Get your still. Bring the exposure down a bit. All right, that's good. All right. Coming out. Coming out.
Ropers. Yeah, looking at the small white tips, it could be a crown morph, but uh, the crown morphs typically have a little bit more distinct white tips to them. You probably lost Steve. It's 10.30 there. Yeah. Yeah, probably. What is Val trying to say? Huh? huh? What? Do, 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 ma, na, ma, na. Oh, bum, ba, ba, da, da. Do, 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 ba, da, ba, da. Do, do, yeah. do, <laughs> From the Muppets. Yeah. Oh, he's too young for that. Oh. Yeah, I didn't watch the Muppets. I watched the Muppets. <laughs> and I, I had the, the Muppets soundtrack on record. Yeah. That was great. Actually, the audio. <laughs> I, me, me and my sister, we would watch the uh, the New York City Muppets movie where they go to New York City and Kermit loses his memory, and that was so sad. <laughs> yeah, I, I wa the first movie I ever s remember seeing in theaters was a Big Bird movie, where like he gets he loses his memory and like some family takes him in and he doesn't know where he is and I I had like nightmares about it. I think I left the theater <laughs> crying. I was like four. <laughs> Wait, Big Bird Great, like yeah. Sesame Street? Yeah. There's a movie about him. There's like tons of movies about him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in like the mid eighties. Zero oh. two zero meters <laughs> at bearing okay. zero three I need to zero. Look this up. They used to have like big live shows I would take my kids to. Thank you. Back in the day. <laughs> so fun. They even had an ice skating one. I love that. I think one of the earliest movies I saw in a movie theater, uh uh <laughs> really pointing out what a single dad my dad was at the time was the godfather. What? <laughs> I think I was maybe 12. <laughs> they had talking in movies back then? <laughs> well, you know it's funny, Rennie? <laughs> if it wasn't The Godfather, it was Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times. <laughs> so, yeah, it would have been a silent film as, as well. Oh, my gosh. What do you think of horses? Yeah. That, Is that the uh, one where they cut off the horse head and put it in his bed? Yep. Yeah, that was a jolt to the snack bar for little Eddie. Another anemone. <laughs> Speaking of Muppets earlier, the, um, one of the watches saw a predatory tunicate, I think is its name. And we were looking at the Ish. highlights yesterday, and I love it. I've never seen one before, and it looks like a Muppet to me. We saw one Fish. at our watch. Fish. We did? Fish. Yes. The very first one. It looks <laughs> like a vertebrae to me. Or was it? Maybe that was us. There was two times, because there was one time where I logged in from the lounge, which was the second time, to chime in that we thought that was a predatory to get for them. Got and then there was the one that we saw on our yeah, first shift. Yeah, we did. We did. We saw it on our first shift. This one. <laughs> oh, that you mean the pre oh the predatory tunicate? I think it's yeah. teen before. No, oh, tunicate. never mind. You're right. We have not seen a predatory tunicate. I was about to say. I feel like I'd remember Vehicle this. Vehicle and the fish go bonk. Yep. Go bonk. Yep. Bonk. Coming out. Oh, his eyes move. That's cool. Holding. They have big blue eyes. Do we know this one? Um, we've definitely seen it before. I'm really trying to look up the ID again. I just barely see it in the Argus frame. Was it one of these movies? The Big Bird movies? All right. Follow that bird, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Coming out. I think the one like Muppet thing that would have scared me when I was little is probably the Labyrinth movie. That probably would have... I've still never seen that. 
I've, I've seen it now that I'm, I'm older, but when I was younger, absolutely not. Uh, oh, Pan's Labyrinth? Or no, 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 no. The Labyrinth with uh, David Bowie. Doesn't ring any bells. Oh my god. It's a weird one. It's a weird, yeah. I've never watched that either. Is that, well, I guess you've watched it, so I yeah. guess it's not on your list. No. It's like my, my best friend Bella. It's her, one of her favorite movies. <laughs> Bella, it's good what she made me watch Bella, it. good luck on chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> but, and especially the Dark Crystal movie. Oh, I, I love I, the Dark Crystal. What? That was terrifying. <laughs> I was so mad when Netflix ca canceled the, the, the show version of it. It was so good. Oh, my God. They won an Emmy, and they canceled it. You see, that's nightmare fuel for me. The original? <laughs> Yeah, the original Dark Crystal the movie. Skeksis, yeah. Absolutely not. That was amazing. That was my childhood. I made my kids watch it, and they did not like it. I loved it. I liked it, too, but... No. I'm, like, trying to... What is this movie about? I've never heard of it. It's oh. absolutely terrifying. It's, uh, it's the... It's, it was made by Henson, wasn't it? I think so. Yes. Yeah, it's a Jim Henson. The Dark Crystal, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking so at pictures. It's like Dark Muppets. Oh, Dark I, Muppets, I can yeah. see that. It was a no from me. Oh, it's... It's kind of creepy. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. Okay, it's very creepy. It's Hannah. very creepy. <laughs> you just gotta like, love the witch, though, with the one eye that she takes out. Just the fact that you said takes out her eye in a children's <laughs> movie. Yep, done. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, thanks. I'm, I'm silently thinking, well, now vocally thanking my parents that they did not let us see that uh, when I was, like, four. Because that, I probably would have had, I definitely would have had nightmares about that. <laughs> Me too. I had nightmares about, like, Davy Crockett. So some Disney movie that, I don't know, scared me. Gremlins? That movie always got me. Yeah, we didn't yeah, see that, that as kids that either. Oh, that Gremlins is also fantastic. That was my first date movie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> don't look up the date of that movie. I, uh, <laughs> <too late. laughs> I know somebody who makes dioramas of Gremlins uh, uh, and is well, well known for it, so. What's this here? Is that just, cr oops. <laughs> is this just Cracks in the Rock? Shout out to I TJ Gremlin coral. Guy. Wait, what? The oh, black you're not stuff? The coral. Not the coral, you're no, so this. funny. This. Yes. That's not coral. That's, that's just. It's a rock. A botryoidal lump, part of a lobate flow. Yeah. I think that looks like rock. This movie scared you? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it was that one, but some movie, some Davy Crockett movie. Are you playing the Dark Crystal? Oh, well, they made two. They made one in, I don't even know. There's something. Is that a crinoid or brisingid or, are those the tips not the same thing? That's the same one Crinoids and brisingids are different things. I. Um, uh, crinoids are from the order Crinoidea. <laughs> You're making that up. I could have guessed that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brzingids are from Asteroidea, which are the regular sea stars. I was going to say, if you said Brzingia, I was going to yeah. come over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is Puhi? Puhi. Puhi. Can you circle it? I don't see it. Oh. For crinoid out loud. Is that a eel? Oh yeah, that's a eel. I see it. I didn't. Re I didn't realize it was moving at first. Bonk. Bonk. At least we're not stirring up sediment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another like movie that I'm remembering. Coming in. The never ending story. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, one of my that was kids so good. Yeah. The uh, Schmidt Ocean Institute has a vessel named after, and everything on the vessel named after characters from that. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Their vessel is the Falcor. Their workboat is a Treyu. Oh. And there's quotes from the book in the passageways. That's oh. cool. Oh. Sebastian. Yep, S Sebastian. Oh, yeah, yeah so get bad. it? Yep, Sebastian. Yeah. 
bridge now. <laughs> My sister just texted me, she was like, I remember never ending story. That was a good one. <laughs> bearing zero, zero, five. Thank you. Sebastian, what's an easy way to tell crinoids and brazingids apart? Are brazingids like um, longer? So like I was saying that brazingids Hawaii. look fleshier. Oh They'll push. And that they also lack claspers on their bottom, on the behind attaching of the stuff. It's like, like seesaw is laying on top of it. Well, a crinoid will actually have a little clasper on it, connecting it to whoever it's hanging on to. And they look a lot more bony to me. Which ones look more bony? Crinoids. Crinoids. Or I'm going to start practicing. We'll have to find uh, one next to the other. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Or we just play a game show style every time I see something that resembles yeah. the two. I'll ask you guys, crinoid or brazingid? Yeah, that'll work. Just put, program some um, game show music in the background, and yeah. we're good. I'm going with phone a friend. <laughs> She's going to phone Sebastian. Are you yep. going to yeah, call on the cops? Yeah. <laughs> or ceratops. <laughs> I like the triceratops. <laughs> well, we saw three of them, so there's the try. Yeah. Well, I think I heard someone earlier today say that we're seeing things in three, and then there were three oceanic white tips. Outside. I think I saw two of them together, but I heard there was three. There was three. I would ideally want the cash cab theme to happen every time. I love that show. <laughs> that show, uh, yeah. The whole ceiling lights up. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. forget how the theme goes, though. Uh, it, uh, wait, no, I'm thinking of a different show. Disregard. What? Disregard. I don't know what this is. Yeah. You That's ever watch Cash Cab? No, are these, I don't um, know what this is. Are these... Oh. Nodules? 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 Um, we already got a bunch yeah, of nodules, nodules, so we don't really need to worry I'm about just, it. I'm just asking if they are. Um, oh, they oh. look like pedals to me. I still get it. They look pretty. If, for zoom? They look pretty small. Mm. I'll pan over um, to the no, nodule nope. mat. <laughs> Sebastian, you should throw in some like trick questions. Cause like I know this is not a person good. This is a an anemone. This is an anemone. Yeah. That's an anemone. Um, that yeah. there's actually is Coming a out. trick question I could do with that because oh, there are. I've um, seen this. Yeah. There are some anemones that you have to be seen that have white tips, mm -hmm. and those aren't anemones technically. What? So I was wrong. <laughs> oh, well, this one's an anemone. Oh, but okay. some that we've seen in the past were not anemones. Mm -hmm. They were corallomorphs. It's a very, very minute detail. You're just continually reinforcing for Hannah her choice of geology was a good one. Yeah, constant. Especially with the spelling. The, the yeah. chalk ops. That was, that was rough. You have to remember five terms. Lobate, sheet, pillow, right. phenopyroxene, and amphibole. Done. Oh, also biotite. Biotite. Ground mass. Probably potassium. 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 That's, that's about it. Argon. Argon. That's okay. That's it. Argon and argon. Argon. Yeah, two, both argon. <laughs> both argons. Both, both of the isotopes of argon. <laughs> You're not giving yourself enough credit. I was downstairs with you in the wet lab the other day, and you were looking at those rocks and yeah. telling me about all kinds of stuff I was seeing. I know. No, I'm just. <laughs> we're just teasing her. No, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm a geologist by training as well, so. So is Dwight. Yep. Joy and I both did marine geology PhDs at University of Rhode Island. Well, not marine geology, sorry, geological oceanography. I was so confused. He's out yes. here in three legs with me, and he just left, I think. Yeah, he yeah. He, he, uh, he was on the one before this. Yeah. Technically, we all have degrees in oceanography, but then there's like 
you can do either physical, biological, geological, or chemical. I'm like, there's a fourth one? Oh yeah, chemi chemistry. Are these cup corals riddled all over? The, uh, um, looks like it. Oh yeah, they look very evenly, like, intentionally placed. It's like cup coral Easter. That's a very vibrant yellow color for this mm -hmm. sponge. One of the, I think... Pac-Man? Pac mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool how it lights up like two eyes. <laughs> Love yeah. that. Doesn't need to do that to an ET sponge and that's a pick. <laughs> well, yeah, if you put the lasers right there, it's going to look like an ET sponge. <laughs> I love, like, the, the stalk looks plastic, doesn't it? Go for zoom. Like, that's, like, the exact, like, it looks color like plastic. Looks like Play-Doh. Yeah. Are we moving? Yeah. Still zooming, though. Ooh, wow. That is yellow. Wow. That is hard to focus on. Now, every time you think of SpongeBob, you see this. <laughs> right? Bolo said it's a bolosoma. Yep, bolosoma is sponge. What does Mackenzie think it is? <laughs> she, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she was really interested with uh, the, the black fish that we saw, because I forgot. Oh, yeah. She was like, what was that? And I was like, fish. I forgot. Fish. <laughs> she was like, okay. Bridge, yeah. Nav. Please do a ship move, zero two zero meters, bearing so Hannah. three six is, zero. Is this just a large Anatomy? flow that is stopped? Thank you. Wait, <laughs> that just stopped? Like, it, I mean, it's pretty dramatic drop off here on the left. Well, it could have fractured and fallen, or it could have just stopped. Yeah, some Quenched. of it could have stopped, some this? of it could have fallen, there could have yeah. been a, fa a fault and, and a... Yeah. Oh, and it slid away or something. Yeah, I mean, looking at it below, it looks like it kind of just, I don't know, I can't tell if there's any, like... Or, or the uh, the cup right. coral stopped it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. They all landed on yeah. one side and like little rockets, you know, <laughs> pushed back against it. Yeah. That's, the, that's my theory I'm going to go with. Yeah, honestly, it kind of looks like it just stopped. So how come that's not showing up on your sonar? Um, maybe because we're, we're not above it. The sonar is mounted on top of the vehicle. Now it's not showing up either. That's okay. That little there it is. My sister said that our whole watch team is slaying right now. Is what? Slaying. Slaying. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said lame. I was like, what? Are, what no. else can we do? Slaying. <laughs> she was like, please tell them they're all slaying. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. That's cute. You said that's Mackenzie? Yeah. Hi, Mackenzie. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Mackenzie. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Good eye. Yeah, it was really funny because I, I told her, I was I texted her last night. I was like, "How? why haven't you come on the stream yet? And she was like, you never <laughs> tell me when you're on the live stream. And I was like, okay, that's fair. Well, right? it seems I, like you to never tell anybody you're on the live stream. <laughs> there's a fish, fish Well, I told again. my fam like my parents and my grandma. I'm on the hunt. Fish. Look how perfect that's, this I was just going to say this, like, perfectly round. Oh, my round. gosh, that is so beautiful. Can we take it? That's too no, big. No, And it's too, like. That's so oh, cool. Oh, another though. fish. <laughs> Could be the same one, honestly. <laughs> Mackenzie, if you're watching now, the fish. This I think this is the fish that I, that you asked about. Here it comes. <laughs> My uh, sister nope. said hi. <laughs> so yeah, she was wondering what this was. Yeah, um, I'm still trying to get the ID. Oh, that rotating ID eyes, That's super cool. cool. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> Very cool. 
Also take a sec to shout out to my friend Zach, who's uh, he tuned in for the aircraft carrier dives and has not turned off Nautilus Live yet. Right on, Zach. <laughs> Sebastian, I'm getting some some, some suggestions that it may be an anti-mora. Fine. An anti what? Anti-mora. That name sounds familiar. That might be it. I'm just trying to sort through these ID guides because I rarely touch the fish ones. It looks it. Looks like it from what you got pulled up. The tail specifically. Oh. I am bad. What are you trying to type, Anna? <laughs> I'm trying to spell it. She, oh. she pulled up Moira quotes hey, from, from... I actually did it, though. <laughs> I spelled it wrong the first time. <laughs> it happens. But that yeah, that, like that it. is it. Yeah, Timora. Okay, I'll, let, I'll, I'll text her the I'm just trying spelling. to I was just trying to figure out where is in the ID guide where I found oh, it before. Some there's some corals. The back side of this. Yeah. Yep. We go wrong. Oh, there it is again. Well yeah. done, whoever sent that tip in. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Another fish. What is that red looking thing? Cup coral. It's a coral. Here. Sea star down yeah, there. Let me zoom on that, dude. That's a paragorgia. Yeah, paragorgia. So Sebastian, what does Gorgia mean? Because there's Metallogorgia, Paragorgia, what is that Gorgia? That is a very good question. I actually do not know. I'm Mike, sure you, it's Latin. You took Latin, any ideas? Gorgia? No. It's probably Latin for a coral. It's the Gorgons. Oh, it could be. Because they have all the tentacles. Right, isn't that like what what Medusa was? That is a cool still camera photo. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is. I always get so impressed with the still photo camera, always. Yep, definitely Paragorgia. I'm not sure who what the guy above him is, though. So the deep red one is Paragorgia? Yes. With brittle stars on it? Yep. Neither cry nor is it resingids. And the one above it? That's what I've been trying to figure out. Chrysogorgia? It looks like a Chrysogorgia to me. It looks kind of fluffy. Squat lobster? Yep. Oh, is that a spider? Sea spider? Oh, know. I didn't even see that. Can I guess? Look at that. Where'd it go? It doesn't look like it has all eight legs. It's quite scary looking. Looks like it's half of one. Looks like I got eight legs. Oh. Oh. oh, bye. I can't even get a good look at it. Get a zoom through the cracks. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that might be rock. Looks like it was so half eaten or something. Pull this off, we eat like kings. <laughs> really jam the vehicle in here. Yeah. Just a part of the landslide now. That could be it. <laughs> My sister said the whole time that we've been saying like paragorgia and then asking and when y'all asked what Gorgia was, she thought Gorgia was an abbreviation for gorgeous. <laughs> 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 so she thought that you were calling it gorgeous. Pa Paragorgeous yeah. coral. Yeah. <laughs> you look Gorgia tonight. I think each watch we're going to have to explain this term now. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That could be new slang. <laughs> like a Paragorgia, it's partially gorgeous? It's partially. Tracking the old fish again. Fish that won't go away. Oh, that's funny. Auntie Moira, Moira, Moira. <laughs> it's not Moira. <laughs> like from uh, 
Uh, I can't say it. Yeah, that show. Yeah, Dan that, Levy's yeah. show. Yeah, I, I tried to say it. I was like, oh, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. That show, which he's wonderful in. Oh, so good. Whoa. This, this looks like a lot it, of rock fragments. It looks like a basalt standing straight up, but I know it's not. <laughs> it's a sponge. So it's, it it's a like it's been sheared off on one it's side, or maybe the current doesn't come from that direction. Or is every other part of it dead except for... No, I think it's just sediment covering it. Oh, okay. Because oh. the interior looks okay. As you can see, it's dirty up here. Yeah. yeah. We should get the vacuum cleaner. Go for Jim. What is that at the towards the top? I'll be there in just a sec. What? Like right up there. <laughs> Would you notice? Oh, oh that. Is that this a looks like a brittle star. Oh, <laughs> uh, right there. Yeah. But it looks like there's brittle also a star mm -hmm. with a. Oh, there's a crinite on top of it. Yes. <laughs> that's not what you're looking at, though. That's no, it was. It was. I was looking at this one. Yeah, that's not it. The crinoids in the back. So that's the crinoids the top. No, the crinoids. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'll need to learn your kinoderms. Congratu <laughs> congratulations. I'm not a biologist. I can't Coming out. Like I'm, I'm changing right. my major again. <laughs> you and that one other guy who graduated, he's like, no. He's in Arizona. <laughs> well, that's a good place for geology. Yeah. Not marine geology, though. He's Looks like doing, a lot of good rocks. Yeah, here. he's doing economy, economic geology. Oh, yeah, that's good. Turquoise and gold, like silver and mines and stuff. I have no idea. One time <laughs> he no explained idea. it to me, and I was like, "That sounds cool." <laughs> and then have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> Please do a move zero four zero meters, bearing three six zero. So I know earlier we were talking about um, like you letting your family know when we're diving so yes. they can watch. And I'll be honest, like when I'm at school with my students, I will just pull up the live stream at any point in the day just to be like, let's see what they're up just to. Just Yeah. I think fun to just see that. Like, I don't think this is updated. Uh, there's a process to it, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's fun to just watch people in the wet lab. Sometimes it's fun to be like, oh, they're mapping. Some there's a status free. update. This is when they're gonna dive. Sometimes they're Fast. in the middle of the dive. Sometimes we might be ascending or recovering vehicles. It just depends. Yeah, we transit a lot because um, the Pacific is a big place. Mm -hmm. And even like when we're working out in these seamounts off of Hawaii, you know, there there's still quite a bit of space between them. So between dives, we usually transit anywhere between four to 12 hours between dives. So if we're transiting, just stay tuned. Yeah. We usually have an update that'll say or give an, give an idea if we can. Also, when we're transiting, that's a good time for rock o'clock. You just check the back bag. <laughs> And yeah. Mackenzie, I will be there. Yeah, check out. Yes, just, it's fun to watch too, things. even when we're not diving. <laughs> and if we're not diving, you still want to show videos to like your students. The YouTube channel is full of highlights. Um, so many amazing things that you can look at there as well. And we've got some folks changing in and out for dinner. So we have a question. It looks like from Akumo who said, um, how can they find out when the live dives are happening? What's the best way for a teacher to prepare their students before the ship to shore? Yeah, so- Changing a video. Um, that's what we were just talking about with those updates on the Nautilus Live site, because there's not necessarily like a strict schedule that mm -hmm. gets followed because mm -hmm. dives can change- it's just locked up. Right. Just depending on what's going on with weather or technology. Um, so I think it's just kind of good to like check the live stream and even if we're not diving, <laughs> they can still see what's going on on the ship. Yes. And then in the meantime, highlight videos. There's also so many educational resources that I pull all the time with my students. Um, so, so so many things too, even when- NautilusLive.org. Yeah. yeah, so check it out. If you're a teacher, go to NautilusLive.org and then you can see the live stream. There's lots of resources mm -hmm. and uh, get your, uh, your students prepared for their ship to shore. So to answer your question about Gorgonian's name origin, according to Latin, which makes no sense to me, it means grim 
fierce or terrible. I actually don't like that, and I'm going to pretend it's gorgeous instead. Yeah. And I will stick <laughs> to that. It doesn't make much sense to me. That's that makes me sad. I like your, your definition better, Hannah. Yeah, my yes, sister is gorgeous. right. Gorgeous. It's, yep. That doesn't help that the whole Gorgonian like, scientific name got changed to something else. So it doesn't have an update on the Wikipedia page. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I wonder if it's a little like, bit more of a search. Like Gorgon, right? Oh, Isn't yeah. that like one of those, those terrifying monsters that, you know? Yeah, that reminds me of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Every time I think of gar gargoyles, right? Gargoyles, yeah. Yeah. Or Gorgon. Isn't there one in the Greek mythology? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, where they yeah. come from. That's the one with the snake tentacles for hair, and they turn oh, people to stone. Oh, there's a Greek. There is a Greek Gorgon. noun for gorgia, meaning agility, nimbleness, and mobility. Oh my gosh. Which hmm. makes more sense that for gorgia sense, because yeah. they're flexible oh, compared yeah. to the hemichorallians. So maybe it is a Greek word. Okay, yeah, gorgons are scary. <laughs> Gargoyles, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Gargoyles could have, I suppose, been created by gorgons because they could turn things to stone. Oh my gosh. All the connections. <laughs> All the connections. All of them. So if you're gorgeous, then you're either grim, fierce, and terrible, or agile, nimble, and mobile. <laughs> I mean, the Peregrids are not mobile, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, the Gorgons are a set of three sisters. Yeah, Medusa was one of them. Yes. My Percy Jackson roots. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. So today when we saw those three um, oceanic white tip sharks, yeah. Megan made mention that there were pilot fish that were swimming along with them. Oh, wow, that's cool. And yeah. so um, I was just reading about pilot fish, and they seem to have a very lovely relationship with the sharks. Yeah. No, don't eat them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the pilot fish provide, like, um, they clean them out of different debris. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah, remora are very um, attached to larger animals for both they can to take little scraps of what's left over of their food from sharks' foods, or use them to help gain more, to swim more easily because they can attach to a larger organism and kind of just go with the flow and wait for the next meal. So it's a great energy saver for them. Yeah. And the shark doesn't mind as long as it's not doing anything negative to it. Mm-hmm. Removing parasites, it cleans up bits of excess food. That's a pretty cool relationship. Does that happen with most shark species, or do we find it with like? They're with a lot of sharks, yeah. I think yeah. mostly for the yeah, mostly the predatory sharks for sure. But I do think whale sharks have a lot of them though, so. Miss Malia, my sister said you have the loveliest voice. <laughs> Aw, thank you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Is this dead? Yeah, it's a dead Walteria sponge. Yeah, it does look like the one that had the. Um, oh, it's a, it might be it. a game of. Is it a crinoid or is it a Brazingid? Where that. is it a crinoid? <laughs> I, um, <laughs> she says it's a crinoid. Is it this else one? Think? Or are we talking about that one? I'm talking about on the sponge. Oh, like I'm saying crinoid. Crinoid? I think Mike. crinoid as well. Yay. Yay. Good job, everybody. Yeah. See some squat lobsters on there. Oh yeah. Some ophiroids. I love how they still make it useful even if it's not alive. 
anything to get into the water column. Yeah. And it's still strong enough to like hold all of that. Yeah. Wild. Kuka, wait, Kupai Naha? Kupai Naha. I love that I have the Chana, 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 Chana Cops mm -hmm. pulled up. You mean the Tina Cops? And it's so cute. Triceracops. I love, I love its little face. <laughs> that one's very round. It's so cute. I, I understand why it's the mascot. I get it now. Yeah. It's this sticker? Yeah. Yes. I have that one. I'm I saving don't. it for home. I don't have it. For my more cups at the, home. There's oh. a bunch in the lounge. You can zoom in there. What? In the lounge. Oh, okay. I'll show you. Okay. These look like appear to be some type of hydroids growing off of it, the sponge as well. Oh, that's a br no. Br <laughs> br no. No, no, no. Uh, that's a brittle star, isn't it? That's what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But is that's not a Brazingid? No. no. But not. the Brazingid is a type of sea star, right? Yes. Because yes. it's an asteroid? Asteroid, yeah. Okay. Look at all that life on there. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I know. It's like fantastic again how they use it, yeah. they still use a dead sponge. Oh yeah, the still camera? The still camera's great. I I wish you can just like have an album of like all the photos yeah. that you had. Are you ever, are you gonna sort through them? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. gonna, yeah, get some highlights. Just making sure, cause I was like, you should look through them. Cause yeah, there's some that good. are really, really cool looking. Yeah. The way that the, the lighting happens to hit down mm -hmm. lower on her, yeah. We have a good uh, overall picture here as we float away. So it's beautiful. I see Elsa. She's so. drawing the different organisms that huh? we see. So it's oh. pretty cool. Click the button. Yeah, I can't draw, but <laughs> that is so awesome. I'm going to have to ask her about it. Push the button. We're just uh, moving the ship over this little feature here, so I'll poke around here for a while. It's a nice cliff here. Okay, even even my sister, but she's not a biologist, is having trouble spelling China shot China cops. Insane. Yes. My so sister easy to spell. It's not. It's <laughs> not. For bio major maybe. If you know how to spell fauna, you know how to spell China, and then you add cops in the end. I should start a spelling school. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all biologists could probably do great in spelling bees. Until we start adding extra letters. <laughs> Hey Hannah. Yeah. So we've seen some things like this. What is what is this type of feature in between all these? I like think that that's a lobate flow. I, I heard believe it's a lobate flow. And can you explain what a lobate? Because I have heard it a bunch of times and was too afraid to ask. Yeah. So lo so the lava flows depend on the velocity rate, and the fastest is the sheet flow, which is super flat, and then the second is the lobate flow, which is like a mixture between a pillow and a sheet. So it, 
the way I describe it, it kind of looks like, you know how, what a brain looks like, like that, those kind of like divots, that's what I kind of imagine. And then the pillow, pillow lavas are just like small, not, well, they can vary in size now that I've been watching these seamounts, looking at all of them, but they can range in boulder sizes to very, very, like pretty small. And those are the slowest flowing. So. So it's pillow lobate? Yes. And is there another one? Sheet. Sheet. Yes. I'm gonna write that down. For well, our... I'll help. When I notice a sheet flow, I'll let, I'll like say it for you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll say it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. What? Yeah, I'll chill here. Go poke around in the rocks. Mm -hmm. See, there's a lot of interest in the Dr. Seuss sponge. So. <laughs> okay, go away. Reminds me a little bit of a lemon peel. Hmm. My sister's going to sleep. <laughs> Good, Good, night. Night. Good night, Mackenzie. Good night. Good night. Good night. Dream of trauma tops. <laughs> yeah, she did. She sent a picture of it and she was like, it looks like a French bulldog. And I was like, that's literally what we said this morning. That's cute. It looks like my dog. Yes. English bulldog. Yes. <laughs> it was, I, I was like, that is literally what we said. She's like, no way. <laughs> it's that bottom lip protrusion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the stubby legs. Oh, my sister, she's a psych major pre-law. So she's not... She's not, uh, it's really funny because she's, this is not like her element. So it's, I love that she's also learning. She's learning a lot, Oops, she said, while button. watching us talk about it. I'll pause it there. I think that's pretty awesome that, you know, we can reach out, like, even other majors are still learning, even if they, if we don't, if they're beginner level. Because that's kind of like what a lot of us are, not Sebastian, but a lot of us are beginner level and all like the biology stuff. So it's kind of like learning all this from kind of, or a little bit of scratch. Yeah, a little bit. absolutely. But we got, get the lucky part of it as like visually seeing it in person versus seeing it in a textbook or talking about it in a classroom setting. Right. Oh, seeing it in a textbook is never fun, especially if it's a, one of the drawn picture instead of an actual picture. Which yeah. a lot of these deep sea ones usually are. Mm. Mm. That's crazy. Because now we have so many, like, still camera photos. Yeah. You can send them off to the textbook people. <laughs> hey Mike, I didn't know you studied geology. We were working on the puzzle. I heard you talking about it. Uh huh. So, yeah. How far are y'all on the puzzle? This one's a little difficult. It's still there. It's so it, there's still lots. Is the puzzle geology? No. No. Oh. I yeah. just I heard you talking about your background ah. and not just archaeology and gotcha. yes. Uh, because we always joke on our watch we don't have a geologist and I was like oh man they have two geologists, so. <laughs> but you guys get yeah, but I don't really in Virginia, which is a pretty fair trade off. Virginia is not on our watch. Oh, who do you have? I have Oshana. You have Oshana. That's even like. She oh. is awesome. Yes. I mean, I love my watch. Come up a bit. But she wishes that I was a part of her no. team. No. <laughs> yeah, come up five, please. We do wish we could call a geologist. Well, okay. I'm usually in the lounge, like from. <laughs> That's true. Like Often. 12 to 4. So next time I'll just talk to you guys from the lounge. Because I saw when y'all were looking for a rock, and I was like, oh, they're doing great. And I was like, and y'all were pretty hesitant about it. And I was like, maybe I should have just chimed in and said, no, that looks good. Just like, so y'all could have reassurance. We just all don't want to be wrong. It's also you have to rock. assume that mm -hmm. Hannah is paying attention enough away from her puzzle <laughs> to hear your calls. I can multitask. 
<laughs> At least I think I can. <laughs> I think everybody thinks they can multitask. Oh, Mia, this is a low bait flow. I can't. I cannot either. Like, I can read and listen to music at the same time. I found out that not a lot of people do but that. But you can't, like, you can listen to it, but you can't, like, focus on it the same way. Well, you can either focus on the music or the reading. You can't, like, completely focus on, on both. I, I guess I can still, like, I still, like, sing along when I'm reading. Huh. But I think of it as a skill that I've learned. Uh huh. A skill I've learned over time. Earlier, Hannah, you were talking about your sister and just kind of all the things that she's learning with us. And I just mm -hmm. want to point out, like, um, looking through even messages from our viewers, we have such a wide variety of people that are watching us. People of all ages, people that study what we're seeing, that send in identifications of coral and sponges and some people that yeah, like, like the anti-mora yeah this might be like the first time for some people that they're ever hearing the word chanakops and i just yeah. appreciate that like you know we're vulnerable on mm -hmm. here and recognizing like we're not experts <laughs> everyone I'm not has a biologist to yeah totally fair i think um, this morning was the first time i heard chanakops yeah. i was like what are you saying well my first thought was obviously the triceratops mm -hmm. And then I was like, this looks nothing like a tri. <laughs> I was like, nothing. Where, where are the three horns? I was like looking for something in threes, and I oh was like, gosh. no. Well, we saw three. So this is yeah. not a trilocops as a triceratops. That'd be cute. With his little mouth like that. I just love how it's like kind of a little bit open, like no matter what. Or at least all the photos on Google are. I think it's so cute how it stands on those two little fins. Yeah. Is this another low bait flow? Um, I can't really, I can't really tell. Um, this could be just a massive, yeah, a low bait flow that's like being broken, fractured. But also it looks like it has that botryoidal texture. What is that? It's well, I looked up what it meant, and it literally just said grape-like. So it kind of, are, some minerals have it. I don't know if you've seen hematite with it. Because I know you collect rocks. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it looks like bulb, like bulbous shape. Like, um. It looks like there's like little bubbles coming off of yeah. it in like a, like as if as if the surface were boiling. Got it. Got it. And then it froze that way. I know. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get a picture on my iPad so you can turn around and look. Well, I'll let you know. Hold up. Battery. Oh. And this one has a lot of sharp angles, you know? Yeah, so it's like a little bit of jointing, maybe? I was kind of looking this up earlier because Dr. Val mentioned it in the wet lab when we were looking at one of our massive rocks that we collected. And she described it as looked like it had jointing and part of a dike. And I was like, oh, that's a great that's a great word. And I was like, that's actually, that makes more sense. Cause I remember columnar jointing, which is very pop, like it's, I'm pretty sure there's a place in Ireland that you can go look at the columnar jointing. Hold I on. remember learning about that in my like intro geology. Columnar, columnar jointing, jointing is like the coolest looking. Yes. Yeah, it looks it's like really steps. awesome. I think I think there's a lot in Iceland. There's okay. It's the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. That's what I was thinking of. Nice. And then yes. Yeah, it I does not it look like it's natural. It's so cool. Yeah. So I think these rocks they don't they're not like columnar jointing, but it is a type of jointing, and that's what I was trying to figure out what it was. But I I think jointing is just that that's a good description. I think you're also maybe muted, Malia. 
I can hear you because you're next to me. <laughs> there you go.